Hey everybody, a video today on something that I've wanted to talk about for quite a while, and these are the petroglyphs found at Winnemucca Lake in northwestern Nevada. This is an important site because the oldest rock art has been found here, and we are going to zoom in on Lake Winnemucca. And just to give you a good idea where this is, I'll zoom out just a little bit here. It's just north of Reno and Lake Tahoe. And Lake Winnemucca is just an ancient dry lake bed. And there's a rich Native American history and legend from this area, and especially from Pyramid Lake, which is right next door. This is why they call it Pyramid Lake. But these petroglyphs found at Lake Winnemucca, I have read about them just briefly in the past, and they've always interested me. So today I thought I'd look into it, and I'm comfortable enough to talk about these now. And, of course, the main mystery is how they were dated to be so old. In my book, you know, you can't carbon date rock, so how did they determine that these were that old? And I found a good website. I'm not going to go into the scientific explanation, but I will leave that link below. But this site here says, Researchers found that these petroglyphs discovered in western Nevada are at least 10,500 years old, making them the oldest rock art ever dated in North America. This is petroglyph site WDL12 on the west side of the Winnemucca Lake subbasin. And if anybody wants to check out this site, they have some good pictures of this ancient rock art that is the oldest ever found in North America. Now, some of these designs look a little familiar to me. I can't put my finger on where I've seen some of these before. Maybe if somebody wants to check these out and they have a good memory, they can leave a comment below if they remember something. But this was just a good site but <clears throat> the legend now where could or do we have a culture that could have been responsible for making this rock art <clears throat> excuse me well we do have one legend from this area of nevada and it comes from the paiute indians and i know some of you have heard of the lovelock cave mummies i believe history channel has talked about these and kind of um talked about the myth and the legend, and I'm not sure if they were talking about the true facts of this site. But we're going to go into the legend here that comes from the Paiute Indians, and once again I will leave the link for this site below. It says, and it's the state of Nevada that the story of the native Paiute's war against the giant red-headed men transformed from a local myth to a scientific reality during 1924 when the Lovelock Caves were excavated. At one time, the Lovelock Cave was known as Horseshoe Cave because of its U-shaped interior. The cavern, located about 20 miles south of modern-day Lovelock, Nevada, is approximately 40 feet deep and 60 feet wide. It's a very old cave that predates humans on this continent. In prehistoric times, it lay underneath a giant lake that covered much of western Nevada. It says geologists have determined the cavern was formed by the lake's currents and wave action. Now the legend and the story and the myth and the fable. The Paiutes, a Native American tribe indigenous to parts of Nevada, Utah, and Arizona, told early white settlers about their ancestors' battles with the ferocious race of white, red-headed giants. According to the Paiutes, the giants were already living in the area. The Paiutes named the giants C.T. Ka, that literally means tool leaders. The tool was a fibrous plant that the giants wove into rafts to escape the Paiutes' continuous attacks. They used the rafts to navigate across what remained of Lake Lahontan. According to the Paiutes, the red-headed giants stood as tall as 12 feet and were a vicious, unapproachable people that killed and ate and captured Paiutes as food. The Paiutes told early settlers that after many years of warfare, all the tribes in the area finally joined together to rid themselves of the giants. One day, as they chased down the few remaining red-headed enemy, the fleeing giants took refuge in a cave. The tribal warriors demanded that their en enemy come out and fight, but the giants steadfastly refused to leave their sanctuary. Frustrated at not defeating their enemy with honor, the tribal chiefs had warriors filled the entrance to the cave with brush and set it on fire in a bid to force the giants out of the cave. The few that did emerge were instantly slain with a volley of arrows. The giants that remained inside the cave, the cavern, were asphyxiated. Later, an earthquake rocked the region and the cave entrance collapsed, leaving only enough room for bats to enter and make it their home. And that is the legend and the story, and it kind of all emerges from one place. 
and I will talk about that at the end of the video. But the story was basically confirmed to a small degree when miners came in here in the early 1900s, and I believe they were mining the bat guano that was in this cave. I believe it was many feet deep, and bat guano has a resource value of some sort. I'm not sure what that was. I can't remember the story. But, you know, you can imagine miners finding ancient artifacts and even skeletons, and what are they going to do? They're out in the middle of nowhere in the early 1900s. I imagine they would have to spend quite an amount of money just to report this find, and who are they going to report it to? I believe, you know, they just kind of ignored what they had found. They desecrated what they found. They ruined some of it. And, but finally, word did get to uh, people that were interested in archaeology. And in 1924, the cave was looked at. And skeletons were found. There was a thick layer of ash that kind of confirmed the Paiute story. But the story about the cannibalism, the giants, and all of that just seemed to have grown into myth. Now, is there remnants or do, does anybody have these mummies to this day? And that is a very murky story. I found this one article here and I will leave the link below as to where uh, these skulls or skeletons today might be. But I want to finish it with this here and this kind of uh, wraps it all up as far as how these stories can get a little uh, far-fetched. It says, it turns out that all the stories can be traced back to a single primary source, a book written in 1882 by Sarah Winnemucca Hopkins, the first Native American woman to copyright a publication. The book is Life Among the Paiutes, Their Wrongs and Claims. At the end of chapter four, she tells the story of how her people rose up against a small tribe of barbarians who would attack her people and eat them hundreds of years ago. The Paiutes pursued, the, pursued them into a cave overlooking Humboldt Lake and filled the entrance to the cave with firewood. The barbarians were given the choice to come out and join the Paiutes and cease their evil ways, but they refused to answer and the Paiutes burned them. She wrote that they were said to have had reddish hair and said she owned a dress trimmed with their hair that had been passed down through generations. She never mentioned giants at all. And so the story comes full circle. The origin of what later writers exaggerated is ascertained, God, I can't talk, at least to some level of likelihood. Evidence tells us that the Lovelock culture was not largely cannibalistic, but there may have been some bands that were to some degree. And as the dress was passed down through generations, the legend of the hair being red possibly rose just as chemistry would predict. Alas, we never do find any evidence of giantism, which is a shame because it would have been really neat. But what's also really neat is digging in and constructing a radiometric history of the Lovelock culture. Having a better and more complete picture of the Paiutes and the Lovelock culture with a cultural history consistent with archaeological history is not only correct, it's far more respectful of Native American history than our wild internet internet-based stories of huge, huge giants running around and eating people. That's not how the Lovelock peoples lived, and my guess is that the Paiutes probably don't wish to be perceived as promoting such nonsense. And I did look into some very initial reports from the miners who, found, who initially found the remains in the early 1900s, and one report says one of the skeletons found was about six feet six inches tall so by no means uh, is that a giant but they do seem to be a race of caucasians with maybe red hair and maybe that matches up to some ancient cultures in peru but i just hope you thought this was interesting this is the oldest site in north america as far as rock art and it was found in the winnemucca lake area in northwestern nevada Hope you thought this was interesting. You have a nice day and a happy new year.